Welcome back, folks. Welcome back to my comeback channel. I'm Fabian Uija, the king of armbar. And I'm Heather Storm, the queen of the rear naked choke. That's I, right. I, I, that sounds <laughs> so good on you. I don't know why. That's my move. What can I say? So, we have a great show for you guys today. We have results from all of these fights over the weekend. Resurrection Fighting Alliance 4, World Series of Fighting, and of course the UFC on Fuel TV 6. All happening right now. UFC on TV 6. Yes. Was kind of like, boom. <laughs> Shock everybody. Everybody was like, what just happened? Like crazy it was a crazy crazy night we're gonna talk about we're gonna go over details but and also we're gonna go a little more deep on this particular knockout and the interesting thing just to set up the stage here is that china really had to do a lot of education mm -hmm. on mma in general i mean japan's used to it a lot of other asian countries are used to it but in china they really had to educate people before they got involved with the site and before they got involved with the fight and say, hey, here's what MA is all around, here's what you can expect, here's the rules, and they did a lot of education beforehand to really get the crowd excited about it. Well, it's not that they're not being followed that. They didn't follow, of course, on TV. They, I mean, they didn't have a chance to see it live. Right. And they already scheduled two more shows next year. Because it's, it's, a, it's a big difference when you see it live well, it versus a, on the TV. Well, tell me, huh? <laughs> you saw some of the fights live? Yeah. You got some blood split on you this weekend. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not any blood actually on me. <laughs> yeah, well, it was kind of close. Anyway, so let's go uh, and take a look. The KO on Kong Lee against uh, Rick Franklin. And we got the video, let's see what he has to say, uh, the interview right after his fight. Thank you, Rich Franklin, for the opportunity at UFC. Dana White, Lorenzo, I mean, the Fatita brothers, I mean, I couldn't ask for anything more. I'm just grateful. I, I don't know what to say. I, it was a lucky punch. You've always been a fast starter. Can you talk us through the finish? You just called it a lucky punch there, but the precision was there. The right hand landed right on the button. Um, he, he kept on throwing that punch at me, and then I, I wasn't able to time my kick. He was loading up, and he's looking for me to kick, and, and then uh, catch me with the... How about that? He didn't even know what hit him. Well, folks, <laughs> if you're at home and you, know, you don't know too much about Kong Lee, he is one of the best uh, kickers on the game. So he has a very strong kick. So he won his fights before, he, uh, like a broken uh, Frank Shenrock arm on the strike force when he delivered one won the kicks and Frank tried to block, you know, broke his arm. He had a very strong kick. So when he's saying that, you know, he got lucky on the on that, yeah. it's because his hand is not as powerful as his kicks. And he kind of like saying that, you know, he's he's a good guy. He's not that guy that try and make things up. You know, he said, that, well, I got lucky. He wasn't really expecting to knock him out with a punch, more so a kick. <laughs> yeah, he did, like before that, he was going back and forth on the on the kicks, yeah. and he kind of count on that kick that Frank just delivered to right. him, and then he threw the you know the right hand, and again, when that hit the right spot, I don't care who is there, they're gonna go to the ground. Yeah, and uh, and Rich Franklin said, you know what, I gotta go watch the video because I don't even know what happened there. It was just so out of left field. But you know, Kung Lee said. He, I was timing it, mm -hmm. and, and I planned it out, and I was ready for it, and you know, I got lucky and I hit him right in that right spot, and, and it has to come to that, right? I mean, you can train as hard as you want, and you can prepare as much, but when it comes down to that millisecond <laughs> of that chance, it is come down to luck, right? Believe me, you're talking to the <laughs> right guy, because I have been there. I have been there. I have got knocked out before, then I was like, what happened? Right. Anyway, I don't like to talk about that, let's move forward. <laughs> that give them the best knockout of the night right and also um was the um, submission of the night submission of the night tiago for... silva and uh stanislav ned ned cove excuse me mm -hmm. uh, got submission of the night actually it was the only submission of the night yeah it was the only <laughs> one that was easy one to win so and uh also uh takanori gomi and mac denzik for the best fight of the night so that was the bonus, and they somehow they delivered forty thousand dollars for for that. Normally they do seventy five, maybe because tax in China. <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway, that's something that they need to discuss later. 
better than that, we're going to bring very fast today from you guys what? Top 10 lightweight. Let's bring it on. Hey everyone, I'm Erin Gales and this is your top 10 lightweight division. At number 10, we have Donald Cowboy Cerrone. At number 9, we have Eddie Alvarez. At number eight, we have Jim Miller. Number seven, Michael Chandler. For six, we have Nate Diaz. And at number five, Anthony Showtime Pettis. And at number four, we have the bully, Gray Maynard. At number three, we have El Nino himself, Gilbert Melendez. At number two, we have Frankie the Answer, Edgar. And at number one, we have Benson Smooth Henderson. Thank you for watching. I'm Aaron Gills, and that was your top 10 lightweight division. <laughs> I just love Erin. She is so sexy in that pink and purple bikini. Woo! That makes sense. I tell you. I tell you what. And <laughs> thanks to chairdog.com to deliver the top 10 for us. Oh, yes. And, Thank uh, you very help much. Help us to kind of match that up and calculate that right. Anyway, uh, we're going to the commercial. We'll be right back talking about the other two big uh, events that happened in Vegas this last weekend. Don't go away. Welcome back, folks. So now we're going to go uh, to WSOF and RFA. Both events happened less uh, uh, two weeks ago, a week ago, actually, in Vegas. And all the fighters came out clean. How about Finally, that? Finally, that's a really good result. I like that. You know, I like to hear something like you that. You know what? I love that because it's like we have so much problem. You see, like, so many people getting... Uh, suspended because you know, every other the, week the, the, every the week we have something to say about somebody getting suspended for some type of drug use whether it's marijuana or steroids or who knows what but you know what not last weekend mm -hmm. everybody turned out clean and and that's it's a relief it is a relief for a lot of people I think so and uh, you know also for the promoters of course they you know they kind of can say they, they run a very clean uh, organization. You know? <laughs> yeah, but again, the promoter doesn't have nothing to do with the whole fact of the, you know, the fighters trying to get a little push to yeah. and their performance, you know. So anyway, we're gonna go over the results. If you didn't have chance to check, was one like we there. You interviewed some of the fighters. I did. And uh, a very good organization is definitely. And we're talking about. Uh, first, we're gonna talk about WSOF and the World Series of Fighting. Now, this is a fighting. new promotion. This was their debut in Vegas at the Planet Hollywood last mm -hmm. weekend, uh, two weekends ago, excuse me. And we were there, we covered it, and this was a very well put on event, well, let me was say. Very it was well. nice. It's, it's kind of like, I, I, can I can definitely say that UFC, you know, should put some money on the side because you don't know how UFC buy every single organization they kind of <laughs> get into the you know they're the looking way. at it they're looking at it so <laughs> is another one you have gonna have to spend some money and buy that one out well that's the whole deal with the the world series of fighting they're taking the guys that um you know aren't in the UFC quite yet or have been or are making mm -hmm. their way and they're saying hey we're gonna do stuff with them so let's talk about who won Tyrone Tyson Steele he beat Gregor Gracie mm-hmm 
with a TKO very, first round. Very, very, up, you know, very upset situation because the Gracie was kind of dominate the fight the whole time. He had a couple submissions going on, and then somehow he versed that and he got ground and pounded, uh, you know, against uh, Tyson. That was uh, that was a bomba. Never right? know what's Forget. gonna happen. Never and know. And then Tyrone Spong from Suriname beat Travis Bartlett with a knockout in the first round at 3 minutes 15 seconds and that was quite amazing that was with a, that was that was good how about that kid <laughs> you have a chance to talk to him interview him you know he's he is from such uh, a nice so, guy Suriname he's from so, so, uh, Suriname Suriname is a very small country. <laughs> I know, you can, still South can't America. say it. <laughs> South America, there you go. In South America. Yeah. And it's such a small uh, country um, settled by the Dutch, mm -hmm. but he's from there. No one knows of this country. It's very small. They have a kickboxing. Very humble kid. You know, he's good looking. Oh. You know, he's talking, you know, very polite. You know, and he has over 100 uh, kickboxing yeah. fights. So it's the first MMA fight, but he being around, you know, on the ring yeah. for, for a while. Yeah. And there he is, right Boom! There. His knockout was Done. crazy. It, 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 it was, was like, cool. what happened? It was yeah. one of those, what happens to me? <laughs> like, yeah. what yeah. happened? Boop. Oh, he's done. Yeah. And then we have Marlon Moraes against Mid Miguel Torres. Miguel Torres. Yeah, that again, went to decision. Yes, and uh, it was a split decision. Uh, as you know, you there, everybody was kind of like half of the place was booing. And if the result was the other way around, should probably cause the same thing. Is that it was a very close fight. They were going back and forth, back and forth. And uh, if you guys know Miguel, uh, he has a lot of UFC fights. And uh, Marlon is from Brazil. You know, very, very nice guy. Very I nice got to kid. interview him you as well. And him him as well. he was just and all so this, thankful. We're going to kind of bring these interviews up, you know, as we're going, uh, you know, to the, to, to the week. But uh, let's move forward. Anthony Johnson against DJ Linderman. Got a knockout in the wow. first round. Wow, I knew round. it, I knew it. <laughs> but Anthony, he, he asked, actually told you on the interview that he's very comfort on that weight division. He doesn't have to cut any, you know, too much. And he's made a way very oh, well. Yeah. And walk in, knock the lights off uh, DJ. Just check that out, it's why that he's, again, he have a very powerful hand. It's like unbelievable. Swing, couple of trains, and oh, it's not that <laughs> yet. It's not that yet. It was that standing, as I, I do remember, close to the fence. Yeah, because it was, it was four minutes in, and almost that. And, and there he is. So and then, that, of course, that's what happens sometimes <laughs> when you like Andre Olaski. Yes, first Devin Cole, and you know he told me in the interview that he was going to do his best to knock him out, and that's exactly what he did. We're going to see that. Let's let's uh, take a look on the photo. I think we got to think of a photo or video. Let's take a look at either one or the other one right now. That's the photo, the beginning and the waiting, and then uh, a little uh, flash from the knockout, and then uh, we also going to show the video. Yeah, the, I just the, the, yeah. The interview. I just have to say, interviewing Andre, like he's. His, he's so stoic, you know, he's Russian and he just stares down with a very stoic stare well, and, and he doesn't have any emotion happening and I just he, take him very seriously, you, you know, took, he's a serious guy. You took, you took him out a little bit, he made it one little joke. Let's take a look at <laughs> let's take a look at the interview. Any game plan for tomorrow night? Of course, game plan and uh, Greg Jackson to create game plan for me. I just have to be smart and I have to follow my game plan. You have a game plan, though. Of course, every, every, <laughs> every, every, I think everybody has, has, has a game plan. So, so we got, we're going to take him down by knockout or submission. Everybody likes knockouts. We'll see if I will have an opportunity to knock him out. I will. All right, I'm standing here with Andre, who is the champion of the evening. And yesterday, you told me you were going to knock the guy out, and you did. <laughs> I told you I will do everything possible to knock him out because everybody like uh, knockouts, everybody like uh, exciting fight and I think it was a good fight and uh, most important thing for me is that I follow a game plan so I'm very happy. So now from now on are you going to stick with the game plan? Uh, I hope so. I hope so. If it's going to be simple, yeah. When uh, Greg Jackson tried to create something like really, really like uh, Interesting and difficult for me, I don't know. But tonight was simple and uh, I'm very happy. How? 
There we go. We should bring a little box so you could get a little taller. I know, I know. Him. I was looking up at him the whole time. Uh, well, <laughs> at least it's you, not me, you know. His hands are like twice the size of mine, too. I mean, this is a big guy. He's a big uh, guy. Kind he kind of he kinda made a little joke when he said that, you know, like he, he something about he's a good looking guy. And he's like, yeah, I know that, something like that. <laughs> that was the only time that he came out from the freeze. You yeah. Know? He was very cool. Well, he's the pit bull, right? Yeah, he I wears know. that mouth it, guard. Anyway, guys, let's go to the commercial. We'll be right back. So fast, so furious, we back already. Back again. Back again. To talk about the Resurrection Fighting Alliance 4 that took place in Las Vegas also two weekends ago at mm -hmm. the Texas Station. Guys, if you don't know too much about uh, RFA, let me give you a, a little explanation for you guys about that. So they made a kind of like a friendship deal with UFC. So that's mean if uh, a fighter that has a very good uh, career in the UFC and he's on the low and somehow not in a good times, losing some fights, they're going to throw them into RFA and give them a chance to build themselves up again. And then if that happens, they go back into the UFC. That's what they did with Tyson, uh, Tyson Griffin. Griffin. Griffin right now. Mm -hmm. As you know, Tyson has an unbelievable uh, good uh, fights in the UFC. He was doing not too well in the end, so he's now on the RFA, and he maybe be back in the UFC if he keep doing what he just did last week. <laughs> that's okay. right. So that's pretty much that's pretty much it. And uh, it was a very good very good show. We there we have a chance to you know see some of the guys. We're gonna talk about one particular fight fighter that was unbelievable. We're gonna bring that up. But let's, um, let's go, go over the results. Let's go over some of the results. We had um, James Cross, and he be beat um, Gilherme. And I don't know if I'm saying that right, oh, and that I apologize. Okay. That's, that's, that's okay. a name I don't even know. Better you than me. <laughs> no, it's better you, actually. Yeah, I, I have that excuse. was a TKO in the third round. We have Marcio Cruz, and that one he won against mm -hmm. Joe Yeager. We talked about that the Ma week Marcio, before. Marcio was pretty cool. We were sitting right next to his wife. Yeah. And his, uh, um, it was screaming, you know, like in Portuguese. <laughs> I was laughing because I knew exactly what she was saying. You know, and uh, I was nervous for her I because know. I'm like, oh no, the wife is next to me. Yeah. He's got to win. He's got to win. And, <laughs> and I tell you, I tell you something. As a jiu-jitsu guy, as a jiu-jitsu guy, that guy ground is unbelievable. How he got the reverse triangle was unbelievable. Anyway, yeah. we move on. No, it was that was an intense, intense mm -hmm. fight. And then we have Chitty Bam Bam against Phil da Dace mm -hmm. at the third round, and that was 41 seconds, and that was a TKO. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we have Tyson Griffin versus Euphrain Escuerdo. Third round, 41 seconds, TKO. So before we move forward, let's uh, take a look at the interview of you yes. and Chidi Bam Bam. Let's take a look. Such a great interview. guy. Great Such guy. a great guy. Let's see. I'm back with stage with Chidi Nujokuani, who just won an incredible fight tonight. I have to say, if I could give you fight of the night and I was an authority, that's what you'd be getting for that right now. <laughs> you are a Muay Thai professional. I mean, you clearly have those roots. Um, have you studied in Thailand at all with Muay Thai? Uh, no, not at all. But my, my original coach in Dallas, Saxon Janjira, he's born, born and raised in Thailand. Barely speak English, and he, he's the one I was with for like 10 years straight. Well, I tell you what, the moves you busted out tonight were better than some of the stuff I've seen actually in Bangkok. It was part of the blackness that I got you. <laughs> My dance moves were in there. <laughs> well, you're definitely dancing around. And you know, what happened? He, he hit you in the balls a couple yeah, times? Yeah, it, it was an accident. I know he wasn't doing it intentional. It sucks that he took a point away, but at the end, it didn't matter anyways. No, it happened like two or three times, yeah. right? The third time was, was clearly an accident. I don't know what. I think he was going for a knee. and. His foot actually flew up, but uh, it was an accident. So tell me this, does that fire you up a little bit more to like kind of get that extra juice going to take him down? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it does. I get hit in the balls. I don't like getting hit in the balls. But at the same time, it, it drains you a little bit, but it, it's cool, it's cool. Yeah, it's draining. You're shaking yeah. it off. You're trying to get back. But meanwhile, you're kind of thinking, okay, how am I going to get back to this yeah, guy? So did you have a plan for that, for that ending there? Uh, no, my coach, uh, one kick Nick, he was telling me to put more pressure on him. 
and that's what I did, and, and I got the got the knockout. We can see it from the fan base. I mean, I could see his eyes start to get more scared, and you get more serious. And I was like, oh no, this is not going good for him at all. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about how you prepared for this fight today. Uh, just train my stuff. We train day in, day out, two to three times a day. Stand up, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, whatever we did, we just train. I didn't train on one thing in particular. I just trained as hard as I could. Because I knew the guy was tough. I knew it wasn't gonna take him out with just one thing. So I just trained as hard as I could. There are a lot of kicks going on there. That was your Muay Thai background. And then you did some little like jump at the end. What was that? <laughs> I told you, I put on my blackness. <laughs> I put on my blackness. I, just, I don't know where it came from. I don't know if you have to put it on. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> something like that. Well, well, tell us what's next. Whatever they want me to do. Whatever RFA wants me to do, my coach, it's up to them. I don't, I don't care what I do, it's just, I just like to fight. Now, did you have trouble making weight today, or was that easy for you, or did you have to cut a lot of weight in order to get down to this weight? I, I cut a good amount of weight, but it's always, it's always the same every time. As long as I can rehydrate myself properly, it's, it's not a big deal. Wow. So yeah. now let me t tell you guys a little bit about Ben Ben. If you don't know, if you never heard about him, just keep your eyes on him. If I give you a combination, okay, he is a combination between John Jones and Anderson Silva. You get the best of John Jones and the best of Anderson Silva, and we, you're gonna get Bam Bam. That so you're saying, is him. So he has the, the kickboxing. Mm -hmm. He has the takedowns and submissions. Yeah. Not only that, he, he knows how to change the game as he's going. As you notice, he was getting better and better every single right. time, every single round. Okay, he, he, the kid is no joke. And he got kicked on his private three times oh my on God. that fight. I felt so bad when that was happening. I mean, I'm like, is this guy doing it on purpose at this point? Well, or does he just have a really big some, something some down point, there? I What's thought about on? that too. I felt like, you know, this, what the hell? This is, was his strategy to, <laughs> you know, kick him in the private, you know? So anyway, so... I think that just made him more mad, honestly. Guys, <laughs> just keep that name up and we're gonna talk about that later on. How but, can we find us? Let's find us on Twitter, at My Combat Channel. You can find us on Facebook, My Combat Channel. My Combat Channel everywhere. You guys got to check us out. Follow the up-to-dates. When I go behind the scenes on the fights, you'll see pictures and up-to-date results on the fights on Twitter. Anyway, guys, have a wonderful night. See you guys tomorrow. See you later.